Perfect. All right. And we are going to go ahead and get started. So I'll kick us off uh, with today's happy hour icebreaker. Um, so those of you who are familiar with being on our co-op circle happy hours, this is our week or well, monthly now conversations just to share information and knowledge around, you know, what might be an interesting, compelling topic or challenge that you might be facing or just an opportunity to share information um, about what might be taking place in your realm within the cooperative community. And so this, like I said, today's conversation is going to be focused on advocacy, uh, but uh, I'm just going to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Maisha Hedden. I am one of the uh, staff members supporting NCBA Clusa. I'm actually working in a, a consultant capacity with the membership department, uh, supporting the co-op circle platform, as well as the volunteer councils that you will hear a little bit more about later on. Uh, I'm currently located in Bowie, Maryland, which is about 45 minutes from the DC line, uh, or the DC side of, uh, of the area. And I am celebrating this week um, that it's Cinco de Mayo. Um, I'll, I'll just say that. It, I'm excited to, to be able to just have some good time uh, with friends and family. And I look forward to that because I don't get to do that quite often. So uh, that's what I'm celebrating this week. And I encourage you all to share uh, one thing that you might be celebrating this week. Maybe it's a project you wrapped up. Maybe it's something personal, professional, however you feel. Um, but I will pass it on to the next person. Um, and the next person that I see on my screen is Steve. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Steve Ediger. I am in uh, Chicago working with Sh Shy Commons, a worker-owned multi-stakeholder cooperative. And uh, this week, I've really, uh, for the last couple of years, I've been having a real difficult time with all of my communications. And last weekend, I laid out a uh, grid of all of the uh, organizations that I'm a member of that I communicate with and how I communicate. And that grid is like 15 by 20. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So I'm trying to get a handle on all of that. And I've, I've figured out some ways that I can begin to uh, to utilize my communications grid to uh, to get my work done. Um, and I will pass it on to uh, uh, Aya. Here we go. Looks like I found my unmute button there. Uh, but thanks so much, Steve. And thank you all for joining the co-op circle. Aliyah Ned, Director of Government Relations here at NCBA CLUSA. Uh, I am currently uh, located in Washington, D.C., so not too far from Maisha here. Uh, this week and today, I'm celebrating the kickoff of Small Business Month, which is uh, part of the conversation and how we can advocate for co-op. Uh, so with that, I will kick it to Joe. Thanks, Aaliyah. Joe Serencioni, um, Government Relations Coordinator at NCBA CLUSA working alongside Aliyah on our advocacy efforts. Um, I'm currently I'm usually located in DC, but today I'm located in New York, where I'm, uh, which will also be my uh, celebration of the week is uh, my girlfriend is, uh, her birthday is this weekend. So we're gonna get to spend some time together and celebrate that. And also as equally important as uh, Small Business Month. So thank you all for joining us and uh, happy to see you all here today. And I'll pass that on to Rodrigo. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Rodrigo Gouveia. Um, I'm the CEO of Promo Co-op, uh, which is an international partnership uh, that offers advice and consultancy on co-ops around the world. So we do uh, international projects. Um, the thing I'm celebrating this week is the start of a, a very interesting project with, we're we're doing in Kenya to develop a pilot uh, health co-op there. Um, so that's that's going to be very interesting, I, I think. So uh, I'm located in uh, uh, Silver Spring, uh, Maryland, just outside DC, uh, but I'm originally from uh, Portugal. So I'll pass it on to Tamela. 
Thank you, Rodrigo. Hello, my name is Tamil Blaylock um, with um, NCBA Clusa. Should update my name. I am at my home office in the DC area in Alexandria, Virginia. And today uh, I am celebrating that today is Friday and we have made it because we had an annual member meeting this week. So I'm happy that's Friday. I'm happy that the sun is out and that there is no humidity in the DC area because it is coming. <laughs> And for that, I will pass it on to Shar. Hi there, I'm Star Breeze. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear some background noise. Um, I'm working from home in Western Wisconsin and we're getting our house re-roofed today, um, pretty unexpectedly. So um, I apologize if you can hear some background noise, but um, Shar Breeze again with Cooperative Development Services. I'm a Cooperative Development Specialist. We are a co-op development center that's based uh, in Minnesota, but also serve Wisconsin and Iowa, so the upper Midwest, and a um, something that I want to celebrate this week is that Stuart Reed and I, some of you may know Stuart as the former executive director of Food Co-op Initiative, um, he uh, uh, recently retired at the end of last year, and uh, CDS has brought him on in a contract position um, to help with a project that we're working with uh, a tribal nation in Northwestern Minnesota um, regarding the potential and feasibility of a food co-op uh, for the reservation. And so we just held eight community meetings um, in this past week, uh, bringing uh, tribal members together to discuss what, number one, if they'd like to see a food co-op and number two, what they would like to see in it. And the response was overwhelming. And so while it was a long week, it was very successful and happy to have done that. Thank you. Popcorn, sorry. Uh, Rami? Rami? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. No worries. It is Rami, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Rami Wood here. I'm in Fairbanks, Alaska, in the interior. And it's a tremendous amount of energy happening everywhere. And this week, in May, it's when the rivers break up in the north. And sometimes there are ice jams and flooding, and sometimes it goes smoothly. We started an intergenerational cooperative aging advocacy venture in 2010 because everything happening. And so what I'm thankful for is that you all are alive and you're doing what you're doing and you're passionate about it. And I'm thankful this week that the energy and everything happening is happening and it will continue to. And thank you for all the work and sharing, slowing this down just a little bit because these are all real lives that we all have and we're all impacting each other and everyone. Thank you. And to iPhone. Excellent. Thank you, Ramey. We really appreciate you sharing that. And I, I just want to echo in saying one thing I didn't mention that I did celebrate for the first time this week was actually being able to sit in on NCB Clusa's member meeting. And what you just hit on is some things that I feel like I really saw through some of the presentations from staff from that meeting, just hearing about the impacts, um, the, the funds that have been raised and the contributions that's made just across uh, the nation, local, um, internationally, as well as, as nationally. So, um, Great point, and and again, kudos to the to the work that we're collectively able to continue to do in terms of impacting the community. So thank you, and hopefully we can continue that conversation today too. All right, is there anyone else who joined that I may have missed? I passed it along to iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. Oh, okay, perfect. This is Robbie Fowler Fink with USDA uh, Rural Development and the Co-op Services Branch. Um, tried to figure out how to change that name on my um, iPhone and obviously unsuccessful. Uh, but I'm, I'm from Central Kentucky and this week we're celebrating all things Derby, which is tomorrow and oh, today nice. Oaks Day. And so, uh, yes, thank God it's Friday, Tam uh, Tamala. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can't see who to pass it on to. So if there's someone else, um, I'm sorry. 
I'm not good at this <laughs> on my phone. No problem. We're happy to help. Um, I do see a couple of names. I'm not sure if they can hear us audially or if they're connected that way, um, but maybe you're connected to a computer. Magdaleno. Oh. Okay. And I hear, and I see LA on the screen or a lie. You yeah. let me know if I'm missing. Yeah. Hi. Yes. This is LA or Aja Simon. Uh, are we just doing introductions? I just got on. Yes. We are still oh. doing introductions. Okay, I uh, just got off another call. So this is, um, I am co-director for Georgia Cooperative Development Center, also president for Digico Global Business Solutions uh, and a member of Columinate Co-op Consulting. Excellent, thank you. Well, welcome. We appreciate you joining us and glad you thank were able you. to hop in. Uh, one other thing we did wanna ask, because you did share where you are and you did share what cooperative you working, you're working with, but what's something that you're celebrating this week or a great experience that you had that you just wanna shout out <laughs> on a Friday? I am celebrating personal breakthroughs that are impacting my life and my work and my business in ways I could have never imagined. So that's what I'm celebrating. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I love that. I love that. Very, very, very positive way to, to end off our introductions. Excellent. But if I did miss anyone else, please feel free to unmute yourself and interrupt us because I want to make sure that we get to meet you as well. All right. I don't know if Naya Musenge introduce themselves no oh, okay okay thank you for that steve okay and i have one more person i'm in i'm um, adding to the, the meeting <laughs> all right hi cynthia i don't know if you can hear us but we are just getting ready to do introductions or wrapping up introductions and want to make sure we give you a moment to share. I know we're putting you in the hot seat, just admitting you to the call. <laughs> All right, well, we'll give you a second to join in when you're ready. No worries. All right. So again, thank you all so much for introducing yourselves and making sure everyone's familiar with who's in the room. Um, I know a couple of folks joined on maybe a, a moment or, or two ago and may not have heard me share in the beginning that uh, this is our monthly happy hour conversations. Um, we are going to be speaking about uh, celebrating Small Business Month um, and having conversation around cooperatives and advocacy. And we have guests from the NCBA Inclusive Government Relations team joining us to lead the conversation. Um, I'm going to just give a quick introduction around Co-op Circle and then pass it right on over to Aaliyah and her team um, to go a little bit more into detail. So with that, I'm gonna share my screen one more time and just give you a quick glimpse at how you can get started and connected in Co-op Circle. So many of you may already be acquainted with Co-op Circle um, and may have been how you were able to join today's conversation. Uh, and if you haven't got connected with the platform, I encourage you to do so, especially if, you're, if you have any challenges that you might be facing, resources you might be looking for, job opportunities, you name it, uh, there's a community within this platform for you to connect with your peers within the cooperative community. Um, you'll get started by creating a, a, a profile, um, and then you will uh, introduce yourself in the space, just share a little bit about who you are, um, and then we'll try to get you acquainted with a group to be able to join. So I'd like to share that with this process, it's pretty quick and easy to get started. They ask three simple questions. What's your full name, your email address, and a password that you like, and then you're in the system. Once your profile is created, you just pop a message in, introduce yourself to your peers, we have a few prompts that'll help you get, you know, acquainted with what kind of a little maybe two season spiel you want to share. Uh, but it's a great way for you to put your leg out there and let folks know that you've joined the community. Okay. I'll pause here and see if there's any questions because I know I can go through this pretty quickly. Uh, but I want to make sure there aren't any questions before I switch over to talking about some groups you can join. Okay, well, hearing none, I will keep going. Um, and I'll check the chat if you popped anything in there in just a moment. 
Um, but the other opportunities you have within Co-op Circle, like I mentioned before, is joining a community. We have small groups and sector groups, which are two areas within the platform that allows you to join uh, individuals who are like-minded or have a similar desire to have conversations on a topic or interest area like you. The small groups are a little bit more profession-based um, and they're an industry-based. So we do have a space for marketing and membership professionals, executive admins, um, and a few other groups. This is just a, a screenshot of a, a few groups that we had available before. We've expanded that to date. Um, if for whatever reason you see that there's not a group there that really speaks to what you're looking for, we're able to create that in real time. Um, so just let us know and we are happy to design that space for you as well. The other community that we have is the sector groups. And this is a little bit more specific, like the title says, it speaks to the industry itself. Um, so we do have a space for purchasing co-ops. We have a space for farmer co-ops and a few other groups. Uh, we do also allow for cohorts to exist in this space. So if there was an event that we had, like the round table, last year's impact conference, there's a community here where you can join in and dialogue with peers who, uh, again, have similar interest to that topic in that conversation. Okay, um, so I will pause here with some of the information that I've covered um, and ask if there are any more questions. Anything? No? Okay. I don't see anything in the chat. Perfect. Um, and then I will just add this last piece and then I'll stop. Um, the other uh, page that we don't have featured here, but it's another section in the group, and that is our volunteer councils. Um, you can check that space out within Co-op Circle and see what, the, what groups are available um, for you to be able to read a little bit more about. But in the coming weeks, we will be sharing more information about the volunteer groups, how you can get connected with them, how you might want to sign up and join. Um, there's some great opportunities that we'll be rolling out, so stay tuned to that, uh, but just wanted to give a quick shout out to that as well. So with that... I will pause and I see that there is another guest with us, Cynthia. Thank you so much for joining. Yep, okay, and you are driving, so no problem. We can just have you listen in with us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I will stop talking now and pass it over to Aaliyah uh, and Joe, who will share a little bit more with us in just a moment. Thank you so much, Maisha. And we can kick it off with our slides here for folks who may not have been on at the top of our introduction. Um, you know, we're so excited to be celebrating Small Business Month for the entire month of May with this co op advocacy happy hour. Uh, we are very delighted to serve as your government relations team here at NCBA CLUSA and your voice in Washington, D.C. Uh, my name is Aaliyah Ned, and I'm the Director of Government Relations. I've been with NCBA CLUSA for just over six months now and recognize some familiar names and faces uh, with uh, in this space today. But before joining NCBA CLUSA, I was at the National Association of Counties leading their agriculture and rural affairs and immigration portfolios and worked on a variety of other issues. So I'm glad to be here in the cooperative space and have appreciated all of you fantastic cooperators uh, as our team has been ramping up our work here. Um, so I'll turn it over to the other half of our small but mighty team, Joe, to introduce himself. Hello everyone, Joe Serencioni. I'm our uh, government relations coordinator. Been with NCBA CUSA and the co-op community for about seven, eight months now. Um, and like Leah said, it's great to see some familiar faces on this call today and also some new ones as well. Um, thank you all for uh, engaging with us and we're happy to go on, uh, go through with our uh, co-op and government relations presentation today. And, uh, go ahead and take it away, Leah. Thanks so much, Joe. And we can go to the next slide here, but just wanna say we really want this to be a conversation as Maisha said at the outset. So for folks who are uh, tuning in live, feel free to stop us with any questions, or if you'd like to wait until the end and we've stopped recording to have a conversation and dialogue, we can do that also. Um, but wanted to start with our NCBA CLUSA Policymakers Guide. Um, for folks who have access to the chat, Joe will be dropping the links to all of these documents, um, and we'll include them for folks who couldn't tune in today. 
Um, our policymakers guide is an annual document that's really to be used for both our members and for you to pass along to uh, policymakers at all levels of government, whether that's your local government, city councils, county commissioners, or at the federal level for us to use with new members of Congress on educating them on what are co-ops, what do they do, and how can we continue to advance uh, this business model within the country. Um, at the top, we have uh, supporting small business um, through uh, access to capital, through strides such as the 2018 Main Street Employee Ownership Act, uh, we also have making sure that cooperatives preserve their tax status and aren't put at a disadvantage to other businesses, given those patronage payments are going back to folks in the community, the member owners of those cooperatives, focusing on international cooperative development uh, and reauthorization of the Farm Bill, as well as implementing new historic legislation. Over the past few years, we've seen a number of significant resources and investments that cooperatives can utilize. And our team here is committed to digesting what that all means, how co-ops can access these opportunities and co-op developers alike, and where we're headed, what that implementation tells us. So we can go to the next slide here. In the year ahead, and as we do annually, our top priority will be reauthorizing the 2023 Farm Bill, which governs uh, USDA's programs, but most relevant to this group, the only federal program to support cooperative development, which is implemented by our good friends at USDA Rural Development and the Rural Business Cooperative Service. Um, this grant program allows co-op development centers, some of whom we have on the call today, uh, to provide technical assistance and training, education, and outreach to cooperatives across the country. So within the annual appropriations process, we are asking through the support of our stakeholders within the Cooperation Works network of co-op developers to fund the program at no less than $40 million with no less than 15 million available for folks to do this good work on the ground. Uh, this program will need to be reauthorized within the Farm Bill, which is set to expire on September 30th of this year, uh, which means that Congress has a tall task of making sure that they get broad consensus both in the House and Senate where there are narrow, uh, narrow majorities held by both parties. Um, to make sure that we can get this done on time, continue this good work, and support our farmers, ranchers, producers, and rural communities. As far as the RCDG reauthorization in the Farm Bill, we are looking to expand capacity for our co-op development centers through multi-year grants and the equitable interpretation of matching requirements, as well as some consistency so that folks know when this funding is coming down the pipeline. Um, Looking at some of our other priorities within the Farm Bill, going to the next slide here. Um, as I mentioned, the Farm Bill authorizes USDA's programs across the board. So this means conservation programs that our farmers can use to be good stewards of the land and implement voluntary practices that we all have heard about maybe in various capacities like no-till farming or making sure there's nutrient management to protect our waterways and things of the like. Um, there's also the trade title that uh, governs some of the international food aid programs that support cooperative development abroad, which you can see listed here on the slide. Uh, title four, which is the nutrition title, uh, you know, governs nutrition assistance such as SNAP um, and making sure that our food co-ops can actively administer and fully participate in SNAP programs and that folks understand that the cooperative business model allows consumers and other member owners uh, to uh, govern that food co-op and provide folks with affordable, healthy food. Uh, Title V, our credit system, that is all of the uh, funding and loans that folks who may want to get into farming may be able to 
access and making sure that we're strengthening the crop insurance so that our producers can respond effectively in terms of climate events and increasingly severe droughts and lack of rainfall or too much rainfall as we see in California. Um, the energy provision, making sure rural electric co-ops that are cooperative providing folks with access to electricity are on the forefront of broadband deployment currently. And then lastly, the value-added producer grant program. So that is sort of where we are headed this year. Some of the big things that we're uh, pushing for, and I will you know, talk about some of the other things outside of the Farm Bill a little later, but I'll turn it over to Joe uh, to talk about some of the new resources that have come down the pike. As I mentioned, there has been historic new investments at the federal level. So we'd love to highlight how folks can tap into those um, that will be flowing through the state and even local governments. Um, in fact, just today, USDA Rural Development announced grants through the Rural Community Development, Development Initiative for both nonprofits and for-profits to improve housing, community, and economic development projects through education. Um, so I'll let Joe uh, take it away with the Inflation Reduction Act here. Yeah, thank you, Aaliyah. And um, I'll be highlighting two different resources for cooperatives that have come out in the past year. Um, the first being the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Um, and as we were going through this legislation, we picked out any provisions, programs, or tax credits that are applicable to, cre uh, to cooperatives, whether it's a, a, a direct program or tax credit uh, targeted for co-ops or whether it's a program that co-ops are eligible to participate in. And I'll drop the link to our full co-op guide to the Inflation Reduction Act now. Um, and as you go through this document, you'll be able to find uh, the title of the program or tax credit. You'll be able to find the section that it's in if you would like to go read the language yourself. And you'll also be given a brief overview of the amount of funding and the type of projects that, uh, that can be funded underneath each different program or, or tax credit. And um, I included a couple examples here of programs that co-ops can be eligible for through the Inflation Reduction Act. One of those being the Rural uh, Energy for America program or REAP um, as it's better known. Um, and this has recently been made eligible for all rural small businesses and ag agricultural cooperatives or, or producers, agricultural producers, and that includes uh, co-op businesses. Um, and these grants allow um, for renewable energy systems to be implemented at rural small businesses, as well as uh, energy efficiency upgrades for these businesses. Um, and that's a great program that co-ops can take a, uh, take advantage of going forward. Um, and we also do have some resources on our website, which I will drop into the link soon um, for ways that people can take advantage of this program. And then another different kind of example that you might find as you're going through this document would be a production cre tax credit for uh, electricity generated from renewable energy sources. Um, and this would be directed more towards rural electric cooperatives. Um, and as you see here, an extensive production tax credit for energy generated from renewable sources like uh, geothermal so solar, um, wind and biomass as well as uh, hydropower. Um, and you'll be able to use this document to find any other, um, any uh, of the list of other programs cooperatives can take advantage of. And go, we can go ahead and move to the next slide, please. A more recent project that we've been working on is putting together a list of congressionally directed spending projects for the year FY23. Um, so, Within the federal omnibus spending package, uh, representatives and senators can uh, request congressionally directed spending for specific projects within their district or state. Um, and within these FY23 earmarks, as they're more commonly known, there are many different programs which co-ops can take part of or which programs that are directed towards cooperatives. Um, and you'll see that in my example here, for example, there's about uh, 1.7 million going to the Sprout Fiber Internet uh, project in Coleman, Alabama to uh, install 35 miles of fiber broadband by the Coleman Electric Cooperatives, um, which will serve approximately 252 homes and 28 businesses. Another project that is more open-ended and less directed at a specific business would be 1.2 million for the Balanced Innovation Hub Minority Business Support Program in Northeast Ohio, which will increase the capacity for business support services 
um, assistance to startups and um, small businesses, including cooperatives. Um, so keep an eye out as uh, we'll be putting together a more public facing document that will uh, have the full extent of all these earmarks for FY23. Um, and we can head to the next slide. And I'll pass it back over to Aaliyah to talk about some uh, new state resources. Thank you so much, Joe. And, you know, we've laid out some of the federal opportunities that are there, some of the more local uh, opportunities that are rolling out. Um, so I'd like to highlight some new state resources. And on all of these, if you have questions, Joe and I are just an email or a phone call away. So please don't hesitate to reach out as you're looking through this information. Um, on the state side, we've seen a lot of energy and movement through state legislatures and other initiatives that come from the federal government but are being governed by states um, around cooperatives, particularly around employee ownership and worker co-ops. Uh, the first one on the list here uh, is the Washington State Revolving Loan Fund and Tax Credit for Worker Co-op Conversions. Uh, the Northwest Co-op Development Center operating in Washington was critical in pushing this forward, and NCBA, CLUSA, and our other members were happy to support these efforts to get this passed. Uh, just a few weeks ago, it would create a revolving loan fund to allow businesses to convert their, um, convert their business to a worker cooperative, as well as provide tax credits for those conversions. So very happy to see that for folks in Washington. Um, more broadly, there is the State Small Business Credit Initiative for worker co-op and worker co-op conversions. This is going through the Department of Treasury, and I've dropped a link to our blog post where you can find more information on who the contacts in your states are, how you might be able to tap into these resources, and where you can sort of funnel your questions or concerns about the program. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Each state is a bit different. Um, and building those relationships with uh, your state offices across federal agencies and your state policymakers is crucially important if, when advocating uh, for co-ops and building those relationships. Uh, going to Colorado, they also recently passed uh, legislation to establish a center for employee ownership, which includes worker co-ops. Um, so there is a lot of energy. Our team just want to highlight we're doing advocacy at the federal, state, and local level as much as we can and appreciate you all bringing these to our attention or letting us know uh, what priorities you might have in your community. And we can go to the next slide here. As we mentioned, amidst digesting all of these great new opportunities working to get must-pass legislation through, uh, one thing that stays top of mind for us in terms of helping to grow the co-op across sectors within the country is making sure that cooperatives have equitable access to capital. Um, many of us know back in 2018, the Main Street Employee Ownership Act passed, which was historic in encouraging the SBA to no longer require a personal guarantee uh, stating that anyone who owns 20% or more of a business has to sign their assets on the line and really doesn't align with the cooperative structure where everyone has equal stakes in the ownership and it's one member, one vote. Uh, over the last five years, NCBA CLUSA has been engaging with the SBA to get this requirement addressed, uh, not only introducing the Capital for Cooperatives Act in the 117th Congress, as well as the Main Street 2.0 and improving SBA Engagement Act to really fully implement the spirit of that 2018 Act. Last year, towards the end of the year in December, SBA announced a uh, proposed rulemaking on changing these criteria. And you all, our members and the cooperative community as a whole showed up strongly. Uh, we secured over 140 organization support in removing the personal guarantee and making sure co-ops can access these critical loan programs. Um, and now that the SBA has issued a final rule where they did not address this, we are exploring uh, continued engagement with SBA on the regulatory side, as well as getting the uh, pieces of legislation introduced during the last Congress reintroduced this year and getting this work passed. You can go to the next slide here.
So looking at the burning questions that I'm sure you all are here to hear about today, how can you get involved in advocacy work, whether it's your co-op, your members, um, or across the board with your state and local governments or the federal government? So we just want to talk about a few uh, top line items that you can do today or throughout um, as you're looking to enter the co-op advocacy space. Um, top of mind for us right now is supporting the Cuban cooperative sector and international cooperative development more broadly. Uh, NCBA CLUSA recently signed on to a letter uh, to help uh, uh, to encourage the Biden administration to engage with the Cuban cooperative sector, as was precedent prior to the previous administration, and support cooperative development, which has a strong presence in Cuba, and to make sure we're maintaining that relationship. Uh, this is just one of the immediate action items, but I'll turn it over to Joe to talk about some of our more longstanding initiatives. Yes. Um... Within the House of Representatives, we come host, up. Uh, we host a <laughs> Congressional Cooperative Business Caucus, um, which is which is chaired by um, Jim Baird and Mark Pocan. And um, I'll let me drop the link to our um, advocacy page, which will show you all the members on the Co Congressional Cooperative Business Caucus, and also hosts a letter which you may send to your member of Congress asking them to join the Congressional Cooperative Business Caucus, which is really important to our work as it helps um, create greater visibility for the cooperative community um, at the federal level. And it also advances our advocacy work um, and will provide a great resource for people looking for uh, co-op friendly legislators within the House of Representatives. Um, so if you have not have yet uh, to do so and are feeling so inclined, please do take advantage of that uh, template letter, which we have on our page. Um, as it'll help streamline the process as you can make this request to your um, to your representative. And I'll pass it right back to Aaliyah. And uh, the last bullet point here, which definitely isn't the exhaustive list, uh, but just a few small ways that you can get involved is supporting, encouraging your members of Congress and your senators to support legislation to expand access to capitals for cooperatives within the SBA small business lending programs and more broadly, making sure we have the necessary resources for programs like RCDG, that we're preserving funding for programs like REAP, and that we're accessing those general loans for folks who either want to start or convert to a cooperative. Um, as I mentioned, we are working to reintroduce legislation such as the Capital for Cooperatives and Main Street 2.0 Act, to build on the good work that the cooperative community did uh, five years ago with passing the 2018 Main Street Employee Ownership Act um, and make sure that it's fully implemented by the SBA. Uh, we know we've thrown a lot of information at you today and we're happy to serve as your voices here in Washington, DC, but ultimately you all are cooperators who are doing that great work on the ground, making that difference in your communities, providing those necessary services and ultimately advancing a more equitable economy are the best advocates within uh, the cooperative movement. Uh, you have a direct line to your legislators and lawmakers as their constituents, and they will listen to what you say. So we appreciate everyone's engagement, their cooperation, and we're always here if we can be helpful. Uh, but I think that is it for you today on the presentation side of things. So we'll open it up for some Q&A and open discussion. Thank you so much, Aaliyah and Joe. I know folks might need a moment or two to think about their questions, get their, their comments that they wanna to share together, especially if you prefer to share it in the chat, um, but we'd love to hear from you and, and get your thoughts on the conversation. And so feel free to mute yourself, turn on your camera. And let us hear your thoughts. All right, I see Shar, your hands raised. Yeah, question um, for um, Aaliyah and Joe. So, regarding the congressional like appropriations as relates to like the you know what they can their their discretionary spending. You know, we were late on the ball for that. Um, and our congressional representatives, fortunately, the deadline was 
had already passed by the time that we um, were aware of that. Can we still, I, I'm just trying to understand the process and can we still write our congressional representatives um, to support an initiative uh, that you know may or may not be in the bill or increasing an appropriation um, such as RCDG? Um, would that still be impactful and are we still able to do that? Thank you. Thank you so much for the question, Char, and that is a great question. Um, you know, each office has their own deadline in the appropriations process. However, it is never too late to reach out to them and let them know as their constituents what their priorities should be. You all have that direct line. You're doing the work in their communities that they then uh, bring back and, uh, uh, you know, announce at the federal level. So it's never too late to let them know where funding is most needed as it relates to this year's appropriations process. No, it is not too late. Penn has not been put to paper at all. So we'd encourage everyone on this call today to call on their representatives and senators to support the RCDG program, to support USDA Rural Development and Rural Business Cooperative Services and the critical uh, services that they provide to us as a community and generally uh, building out the ecosystem for cooperative development more broadly. So the short answer to your question is no, it's not too late. Early and often is the guidance, but you know, with Penn not being put to paper for this year's appropriations bill and negotiations very much ongoing outside of uh, specific appropriations, but discretionary spending at the federal level more broadly, great time to reach out to folks. Thank you, I really appreciate that. And again, I are also, I just wanted to say, to your point on the slides with the titles um, in the farm bill to um, that you guys are keeping an eye on to make sure that food co-ops are eligible, um, you know, to tap into um, those benefits on behalf of their members. That's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely. Excellent. It looks like we have another question from LA. Hi, thank you, and thanks for this great information. Uh, I think my question is a little more general. We have um, our one of our board members has drafted legislation for um, Georgia law. Right now, you can only um, establish a producer co-op here, and in fact, the co-op that I served at for many years um, in Georgia was incorporated in Wisconsin. So, just looking for I don't know best points of contacts or processes if we're starting new advocacy work like that and the best path forward. Yes, to that propose is, our legislation. That is a great question. Um, you know, engaging with your state legislators is always going to be an uh, excellent uh, window into making sure that this good work gets done. Um, I think, yeah, that point that you've made about it being limited to producers within your state statutes and needing to incorporate in other states is definitely a top line item that your legislators would want to know. Um, if other folks, as an aside, are wondering what their state co-op statutes are, NCBA CLUSA, in conjunction with the University of Wisconsin, maintains the state co-op statute library, which you can find on our website. Uh, but would encourage you to uh, raise this, talk to your, start talking to your county commissioners, your city council members, as they often have those direct ties, and getting that buy-in from local government helps to elevate the issue to the state level as well. Um, would be happy to connect with you as well offline if you want to drop us a note or your email address on who that might, that contact might be when it comes to the direct ties to your state legislators. But building those connections through all levels of government is critically important in getting general buy-in and folks ultimately want to do what's best for their state, their district, their constituents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you for that. All right, we got another raised hand, Steve. Um, thanks. Um, we're pretty fortunate in Chicago that uh, in that our current mayor for the next few days, uh, who was voted out of office, um, did uh, grab about $15 million 
from some federal funding. I don't remember whether it was the uh, Inflation Reduction Act or uh, one of the uh, COVID-related acts. Um, uh, and uh, ha is releasing that to uh, a community wealth building project targeted at um, funding um, startup co-ops, worker co-ops, uh, which is great. Unfortunately, as governments do, you know, they uh, they approached it more from like a public private partnership uh, approach or a um, nonprofit industrial complex kind of approach. And um, so that money is not really ending up in hand, the hands of small uh, co-ops that are getting started. Um, and it's not being, you know, the, the funding is not being developed in that manner. So um, uh, that's just a comment, you know, things are going well here in Chicago and there's a lot of co-ops popping up. However, uh, we're not really getting the kind of support that we need from the government, either local or federal. Um, and uh, along that line, uh, I have a question about your experience with small, the uh, local SBA offices. Uh, anecdotally, I would say that our uh, information has been that despite the fact that Main Street Act uh, went into effect, I think in twenty at, in twenty twenty two at the beginning of twenty twenty two. Nothing has really changed in those offices. Maybe one or two offices have started offering co ops as an alternative, but by and large, that message has not gotten into those offices. What what is your experience with that? It's a great point, Steve. Um, you know, on both ends, and you know, encourage consistent communication with your local governments if programs intended to serve the community aren't being, you know, implemented in the best way possible. Um, on the SBA local offices, you know, in attending uh, committee hearings for small business committees, um, that's something that we've heard time and again is that not only is staff capacity at the local office not there, but also some of the information being shared from headquarters making its way down to the local office and fully implementing the spirit of Main Street and employee ownership initiatives more broadly within SBA um, hasn't truly happened. As advocates, you know, the best uh, way for us to make inroads is to be consistent in our messaging, to talk to them, to tell them, hey, this is something that we crucially need. Here's the good work we're already doing, and here's the work that we could do with continued support. Um, and, you know, that lack of information sharing is why we were adamant about getting legislation like the Capital for Cooperatives Act reint reintroduced during this Congress that was introduced last Congress, as well as the Main Street 2.0. And in fact, one of the bills was titled Improving SBA Engagement on Employee Ownership to hit at the exact point that you were making there. So we're working tirelessly um, to meet with the right staff to educate new members of Congress. There's over 100 of them in the House right now. Uh, so we've got our work cut out for us as a small but mighty team here and we'll continue to uh, carry that message forward. But ask that, you know, you all as constituents do the same and elevate those concerns. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for that. Anyone else have any questions or comments, challenges that you might be facing that you want to bring up regarding today's conversation? All right, Robbie, I see your hand raised. Good afternoon. Um, I just hopefully uh, not stepping on anyone's toes, but I, I had an interesting conversation where we were at a meeting in Pittsburgh with the representative. Um, she's a Congress, uh, Pennsylvania Congress uh, lady, Sarah Inamoderato, and she works with Senators Casey and Fetterman, and I think Representative, uh, yeah, Summer Lee for co ops. Um, and we discussed they needed loans there in Pittsburgh, which unfortunately rural development can't do. So I mentioned to her this issue with the personal guarantees about SBA, and she was going to get with them to hopefully work, um, dare I say, push SBA to take other 
options other than a personal guarantee? Because I know that um, Andy Dramalowicz had been in that kind of conversation with SBA to tell them what we take. Um, so I don't know if it's helpful for any of your Pennsylvania membership members to maybe reach out to them because I also mentioned that it would be really great if they would they used to have a co-op center within I believe SBA from what I've learned if they would reinstitute that and also start training their staff at the SBDCs about cooperatives so don't know if that's helpful um, for you guys to know um, Hodge, I just we just had a meeting with Kansas that's having the same problem as you with state statutes and um, <laughs> Aaliyah, just like you said, you know, University of Wisconsin. And um, we also mentioned um, to maybe connecting with Hannah Scott at Ohio State because she is um, an attorney and sometimes that's nice to have a co-op development center that she also had that legal background, but also stress getting with your um, state representatives to make sure that they know what a co-op is and how this is great for their community and their constituents because it keeps the money in that community and kind of just give them that co-ops 101 speech maybe on <laughs> how great it is for them and um, their voters. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Sure. Exactly right, Robbie, and appreciate the flag on uh, the the Pennsylvania representative as well as other resources in terms of how we can educate policymakers. Our policymakers guide is a great document to as you're trying to get in touch with folks to give them a co-op 101 as well as what are some tangible ways to do that. Um, and I think Robbie's point highlighted an important thing that I didn't mention invite your members of Congress and your senators to your co-op or to your center. Show them all of the great work that you're doing and the impact that you're having in your community. Uh, again, when you talk about the economic piece of it, folks can't argue with that, but also talk about, you know, just the social component of it and how co-ops serve multi-purposes within communities um, and can address a number of different uh, issues and be solutions as a time-tested model. Um, so I just wanted to amplify those comments, Robbie, and appreciate you highlighting those resources. Perfect. Thank you so much. Awesome. I saw one more hand raised, but I know we're about two minutes out. Um, if you can, if you can make your your question or final comment short and sweet, um, then we can make then we can wrap up and get some closing remarks, Ramy. Yeah, I'll do that short and sweet. You know, with all the structures and with all the legislation and all the states, we draw these lines of borders between us and disciplines and hierarchies, and we're all people. And so as we have to maintain our positions and leverage the power and the positions that we have, we also know that these are all temporary. We didn't have them yesterday and we won't have them tomorrow. So remind all those and each other in our positions that we are people, that the co-op ideals are the care that we share the abilities, the questions, the vulnerabilities, and in that practice with everything going on, as stressful as it is, instead of having to sell or promote the 101, we can just relax and allow people in a sense to find it on their own and then meet them with all the products and the supports and everything else when they themselves find that it's grounding to help their work get done. Thank you. That was powerful. I 100% I agree with you on that. Being able to have the opportunity for it to be an organic conversation where it's just second nature. Definitely agree, agree. I just talk okay. about co-ops everywhere I go. <laughs> Anybody who will listen, I will give, I, I have my co-op spiel, but I'm going to go right down to my city uh, council and my uh, county commissioners and do the same thing. Thank there you, we, Andy. we love it. <laughs> yes. Well, I know that Joe and Aaliyah have been dropping several helpful resources in the chat. So I encourage you all within these last 60 seconds before we sign off to save whatever links that you can. Um, but I know that they have also shared their contact information. So please feel free to email them directly. I believe I'll give Joe the floor to just repeat the email one more time. 
Yes, the email to contact uh, that will go both to both myself and Aaliyah is uh, advocacy at ncba.coop. Yes. So if you have any questions, feel free to pass them along to them. Um, the last thing that I have before we sign off um, is just to encourage everyone to join us next month for our next happy hour, which will be on Friday, June 2nd from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and this will be a conversation that's focused on uh, supporting cooperatives and their marketing strategies. So we will be continuing to have these really engaging and helpful conversations um, and just giving you a chance to connect with each other. Um, you may not have um, met the persons in the room today beforehand, but we encourage you to do so in co-op circle as well. So with that, I will close us up um, and thank you all so much. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you again, Aliyah and Joe for your time. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone.